Hi, it's Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will continue talking about Mass Plus and problems, which is part of the uh, Unizor.com. Now, this course, Mass Plus and problems, contains um, different problems, which are not really standard, uh, just to check your theoretical knowledge. They are a little bit about, about thinking, um, non-standard, if you wish, non-typical. So, today we will talk about averages. <coughs> I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the Unizor.com because every lecture, including this one, contains textual part, notes, basically, which is like a textbook. And uh, in general, all the lectures are logically related. There are menus. So, the site is, by the way, absolutely free. There are prerequisite uh, courses here. In this particular case, the prerequisite course would be Mass for Teens. Um, there's also Physics for Teens on the same website. All totally free, no ads, no sign-in required. I mean, if you wish, you can. Um, so, just very good source of information. Okay, so, talking about averages. Well, first of all, there are many different types of averages. For example, um, everybody knows something like uh, arithmetic average or mean. Let's say you have number 4 and number 9, so you basically add them together and divide it by 2, and that would be 13, like 6.5. That's arithmetic average. There is a geometric average, which is square root of their product, which is what? 36, uh, 6. Well, 6.5 is in between. 6 is also in between, so it's different averages. There is a quadratic average, which means you have to put 4 square plus 9 square divided by 2, and square root, that's what, 16, 81, 97 divided by 2, 48 and a half, almost 49, so it's approximately 7. Also in between, but it's different averages. Now, what's interesting is, that arithmetic average is always greater or equal to geometric average. And that's what we are going to, to, to prove today. And not only for two numbers, but for any number of numbers. <coughs> so, now, here is a set of numbers where index i is changing from 1 to n. Now, arithmetic average is, you have to summarize them. And divide by number n. That's arithmetic average, and I call it a n. A stands for arithmetic. Now, geometric average, let's use the letter G. That's, you have to uh, multiply them, all of them, so it's a product. It's a, a Greek letter pi, also from 1 to n, xi, and have the root of n's degree, which is 1 over n power, as you know. Okay, so what we have to really prove is this. Okay. Now, there are many different proofs. It's not really like an easy thing, by the way. Um, so there are many different proofs. I will present two. Um, one of them, the first one which I'm, uh, which I'm uh, uh, presenting is by a uh, famous uh, mathematician, um, French, I believe, Cauchy. Okay, it's almost like by induction, but not exactly. So, first, we check it, obviously. That's the approach which we are using all, all this to check for induction, to prove by induction. So, for n is equal to 1, uh, that's obviously uh, equal if it's only one number, so it's uh, sum would be that number itself, x first, 
uh, divided by 1, so it's still x1, multiply x1 uh, from i is equal to 1 to 1 basically, so it's also x1, and uh, the square root of the first degree, which is also x1. So it's x1, and this is x1. So it's equal, so that's equal. Now, with 2 it's just a little bit more difficult, but still not very difficult to play. Now, with 2 uh, I will do something which is, uh, I, I believe, general kind of a logical approach. Um, here it is. So you have, let's say, two numbers, x1 and x2. So they are uh, arithmetic average is this. Now their geometric average is this. I use square root. Now I didn't mention it before, but we are talking only about non-negative numbers because otherwise square root would have some problems, etc. So it's real non-negative numbers. Now I would like to prove that this is greater than this, regardless of what kind of non-negative uh, real numbers x1 and x2 are. Now, I will prove it the following way. I will start from something which we have to prove. This is some kind of an analysis stage. I will make certain transformations which are invariant and reversible. And uh, uh, obviously, what, what's a reversible? Well, for plus it's minus. For, for uh, square root it's uh, uh, power. And uh, for division it's multiplication, or vice versa. So in many cases these are reversible transformations. For example, if we don't restrict ourselves to uh, non-negative numbers, if we allow negative numbers, then square root and power of 2 are not really reversible because from minus 5 you can raise it to, to the second po power of 2, that would be 25, but if you will extract square root, arithmetic square root, you will have 5, not minus 5. But within the negative, non-negative numbers, that's a reversible um, transformation. So I will reverse, I will rever use reversible transformations to come up with absolutely true statement. Is it a proof? No, because from a false we can always get to true using logical uh, transformations. So that's not a proof. The proof is from absolutely true statement, logically come up with whatever we need. So in this case I will just reverse all the transformations. And that's the proper way of proving certain things. So how do I do it? Well, I will square it, the both parts. So I will have x1 plus x2 squared divided by 4. And I will try to prove it that this is x1 times x2. Or x1 squared plus 2x1 x2 plus x2 squared greater than 4x1 x2. 4 goes to the left part, I will have x1 square minus 2x1 x2 plus x2 square greater than 0. Now this is obviously x1 minus x2 square greater than 0. Now this is absolutely true statement. x1 minus 2, since it's square, is greater or equal to 0. Now I'm saying all the, uh, all the transformations which R was just making are reversible invariant transformations. From here, from the absolutely true statement, I can go to here. From here, I can go to here by adding 4x1, x2 to both sides of equation. That's an uh, uh, invariant transformation. Now this I will transform into this. Uh, just, you know, change the uh, uh, the explicit square into this and divide it by 4 and from this by extracting square root from both sides 
which is an invariant reversible transformation if we are talking about non-negative numbers I get this now this is the proof so analysis you go from whatever needs, needs to be proven to uh, uh, definitely a true statement and then the real proof is to go backwards and it's not obviously in this only cases it's many other cases that's the technique which you have to make which you have to go through if you want to really prove the thing. Some people, for whatever reason, just stop at the very end of this, start from this and come to this and say, okay, that's a proof. No, that's not a proof. Because it might be the false statement and you still can come up with a true statement. We did these examples when we were talking about logic in the math routines course, prerequisite course. Okay, so. For one, we have checked. For two, we have proven. For n equals two, okay. n equals one, we check. n equals two, we prove. Now, next proof is not exactly the way how we do it in, uh, in I would say, typical uh, inversion um, induction. Sorry, induction. We were usually going from n to n plus one. So from 2, we can go to 3, from 3 to 4, etc., etc. Now, we will do it differently. We will do it from n to 2n. So I assume that for n, it's true. The um, a n greater than g n. Arithmetic average of n numbers is greater than equal to a geometric average. So I assume that for n it's true, then I will prove that for 2n is also true. What it will give me? It will give me from 2 I can go to 4, from 4 to 8, from 8 to 16, from 16 to 32, etc. Only uh, powers of 2, only if n is out, uh, powers of, of 2, that would be the proof. Okay? So that's not a complete proof, so that will be a continuation. But the first thing I would like to prove is this one. So again, my first stage I checked and proved for this. My second stage is this. And the third stage would be for all other ends. Okay, now how to prove it for this? Okay, so if you have two n uh, numbers, let's divide it by two um, subsets. Okay, subset number one would be xi where i is from one, 1 to n and subset number 2 would be all x i's where i belongs to from n plus 1 to 2n so I have divided my group of 2n numbers into two groups from 1 to n and from n plus 1 to 2 to 2n now each one of them has n elements. So for each one of them this is true. So A1 n greater than G1 n. Now 1 means for the first subset. Now for the second subset I have A2 n greater than G2 n. Okay? Now, what is A2n, which is arithmetic average of all of them? What is this? Well, that's sum of these and sum of these, and then you sum them together and divide by 2n, right? So what is the sum of these? Well, if I know the average, if I average multiply by n, that would be sum of these, right? So it's n times a uh, n first. Now some of these are they're also number n times a n two and then I divide it by two n. Right? So this is a n one plus a n two divided by two. Okay, 
Now, what is their geometric average? This is not good. Gn. No, G2n. Their G2n is their product in power 1 over 2n, right? So what is their product? Well, product of the first one, since we know geometric average, that would be um, geometric average of the first one. And I will raise it to the power of n, right? So this is product in the power of 1 over n. But if I will multiply, if I will raise it to the power of n, I will get the product itself. Then I have to multiply it by another of the second group, power of n. And altogether, I have to raise it to the power 1 over 2n. So this is the product of the first and of the first uh, group. This is the product of the second to the power of n. And then from all the product of all the numbers, I have to um, raise to power 1 over 2n, or, or root of the 2n's degree of power. OK, which is equal to what? It's equal to g n and the power of one two. Am I right? Times g n the second one and the power of one over two. Powers are multiplied, right? which is gn times gn to the power of 1, 2. Now, OK, that's done. So I have my expression for g2n, and I have my expression for a2n. Now the rest I can wipe out. So this is sufficient. Now A to N is equal to A N first plus A N second divided by two. So average of all the two n's is basically average of two different uh, groups. Now this is greater than or equal to, I assume that for n uh, my inequality is true. So this is greater than g n first plus g n second divided by two. I just replace this with this and this with this. That's why I'm putting the greater than sign based on this. Now this is, these are two numbers divided by two, which is arithmetic average of two numbers. It's greater than, than geometric average of these two numbers, which is what? Gn first times Gn second square root. But this is exactly this, equals to g to n. And that's how we have proven that a to n is greater than g, or equal to g to n. So arithmetic average of two n numbers is greater or equal to geometric average of these two numbers, but under assumption that for n it's true. So now, since we know that for n equals 2, it's already true, we have proven it, 
So from n equals 2, we go to n equals 4, from 4 to 8, from 8 to 16, to 32, etc. So we have proven for all numbers n So for all n is equal to 2 to the power of k, where k is some natural number, we have proven it. Now, how to do in between? So let's say my n is between 2 to the power of k1 and 2 to the power of k. So it's somewhere in between. So you have these xi, where i from 1 to n and n is here. So what I will do is I will complement this set of n numbers to a set of let's say m is equal to 2 to the power of k minus n. This is number of elements which I need to complement to 2k. So I will put um, let's say g n m times. So my new set contains n given elements and m where m is this, gn's where gn is geometric average of these n numbers. So all together I have n plus m which is 2 to the power of k numbers in my set. So x1, x2, etc., xn, and then gn, 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 m times, all together constitute a set of 2k to the power of k numbers, for which my previous proof has been already done. So for 2 to the power of k, I know that everything is true, which means that x1 plus x2 plus etc. plus xn, that's my sum, plus g m n plus g n plus etc g n so these are n elements and these are m elements I know that their arithmetic average which is divided by 2 is greater than equal their geometric uh, which is what product of all of them which is product for, for xi, i from 1 to n, times product of all my gn, the m, uh, I, the m of them, so it's to the power of m, and then I have to have power 1 over m plus n, right? m plus n. So let me just write it again in a more compact form. So this I have to divide by, well, I don't know why I put 2 here. I have to divide it by m plus n, right? All right. So what do I have now? I have sum of xi i from 1 to n plus m times g n. This is the left part. And all of this is divided by 1 over m plus n. Right? So that's my left part. And I know this is greater than or equal product from 1 to n of xi times g n to the power of m and power 1 over m plus n. Okay. That's good. So this is a n and this, uh, sorry, this is a 
n plus n. And this is g m plus n. Okay. Now, let me just simplify it. What is this sum? Well, the sum is basically the average times number of uh, uh, elements. So it's a n times n. That's this one. Plus g n times n. So that's my left part, right? Divided by m plus n. On the right I have... Now what is this product? Product is g n to the power of n times g n to the power of m and all of this the power f plus 1 over f plus n so that's now that's how look how my inequality looks now and this is a true inequality because it contains 2 n uh, m, m plus n to the power of k elements and basically from here I will derive whatever I need okay how do I do it? Um, now, what is this? This is g n, power of n, and power of m. So together is m plus n, and then 1 over m plus n. So this is just g n on the right. So on the right, I have G N. No, look like. M plus N and 1 over M plus N. On the left, I have this. A N times N plus G N times M. And I will put this M plus N to the right side. So what's left? Gm, Gm. So what's left would be a n times n greater than Gn times n, because m times Gn times m will, will, will cancel out. Cancel this, and I have a n greater than Gn. Arithmetic average greater than. Now, I can actually do exactly the same by complementing not with geometric average to complete my set to 2 to the power of k elements I can uh, um, use the uh, arithmetic average and do exactly similar kind of things and get the similar result I put it in notes for this lecture so that's probably would be a nice um, exercise for you when, it, when you will read it it's basically the same kind of proof but slightly different. And then I wanted to have another proof very quickly which belongs to Polya. Very clever, I would say. Now, you know that this is e to the power of x graph. It has tangential line at x is equal to 0 at 45 degrees. So the tangential line equation would be y is equal to x plus 1, obviously. So it's x raised by 1 up. So if I will uh, use, um, if, if I will shift all the graphs to the right, um, I will have, uh, instead of this point, I will have this point, and the, and the uh, tangential line would be at point x is equal to zero, zero. Uh, no, one, one. Here, one, one. That's tangential point. Here is zero, one. You shift to the right. Now, when you shift to the right, 
the graph of the uh, e to the power of x would be e to the power, uh, uh, sorry, e to the power x minus 1. And instead of y is equal to x plus 1, I would have is equal to x. Now, I can actually spend some time um, uh, and talking about the following equation. Now, from the graphical uh, uh, standpoint, you obviously see that e to the power x minus 1 is greater or equal than x, right? This is greater than this. It's above. Now, we can actually go to some um, calculus thing and uh, saying, okay, the first derivative at this point is equal to 0. Um, uh, between the sub be be between the difference of these two, two functions, and uh, it's never actually goes to zero anywhere else. It's always positive. Uh, so if, if I will have difference between two functions, and that means that it's convex, and that means that um, it's always positive. If it's zero at one point and uh, and uh, goes only up. But it's kind of obvious right now, just from the graphical standpoint. And they don't want to go into these calculuses. Uh, so I will take this as basically as granted and obvious um, inequality. But from here, it's very easy to uh, have our um, inequality, because I will use it for x i divided by a n. So what will be? I will have e to the power x i divided by a n minus 1 greater or equal to x i divided by a i. Right? So instead of x, I'm using this. Okay? Then I multiply it. I from 1 to n. What will I what will I have? I will have e to the power of uh, x1 minus uh, divided by a1 uh, a n minus 1 times e uh, to the power for x2 for x3 etc and powers are adding together so if i will add them together i will have basically sum of x i divided by a n minus minus 1 would be n times that would be on the left part on the right part i will have Product of all x i's at one to n divided by a to the n to the power of n. Right? Because a n would be multiplied by each other. Now, what is this? Well, uh, sum divided by n is a n, sum divided by a n is n. So n minus n would be zero. So this is 1. That's why we have that 1 is greater than product of x i's divided by a n to the power of n. Or power of uh, a, a n to the power of n greater than product of x i and uh, if I will use power 1 over n, I will have on the left side I will have a n, on the right side I will have g n. That's the definition of the geometric average. So from this very simple inequality, this greater than this, I can very easily derive this. That's a very clever actual idea. All right, so that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, I put a little bit more, maybe some logic behind these, these graphs, but it, it, it's obviously a simplest calculus uh, problem, standard calculus problem that this is greater or equal than, than this one. Other than that, everything was really kind of stro strong uh, proof, two different proofs, that uh, arithmetic average is greater than geometric average. 
and there are other proofs if you want to it's all brain exercise so I do recommend you to spend some time and get into this proof very very close so you can read this notes for this lecture to get to the notes you have to go to unisor.com choose the course mass plus and problems uh, this is algebra and this is algebra 2 0 2 that's it thank you very much and good luck